Hey guys, Bravo here with BravoPUA.com, and this is the second episode of Ask the Alpha Male. And remember, if you have any questions, just email them to me, BravoPUA at gmail.com, Ask the Alpha Male is the subject line, and I'll get to as many as I can. And just quick speed rounds, two quick questions. Um, one, what's the best thing you ever did to pimp out your pad? It's on right now. It's a projector. I got it hooked up to a PS3, so I got Netflix, Hulu. You can torrent tons of movies. Um, I got it set up on a projector with a little sound system. It was actually less expensive than getting a really nice big TV, and it's like a little mini movie theater in here, and I use it all the time to see events back at my place. The second speed question was a favorite gun. I worked at a gun range. I tried tons and tons of different handguns. Um, SIG Glocks, HKs, I, I, I've used and shot tons of them. My favorite was the very first gun I ever bought. I ended up going back to it, a Glock 19. It's my all-time favorite gun. I'm amazing with it. Highly recommend it. So uh, that's it. Glocks. I always recommend Glocks, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, um, Strider Knives, and Reading the Game. Those are like things I, I recommend for every guy out there. All right, this one's from Patrick. So this girl won't agree to a day two. She keeps contacting me out of the blue. She hasn't said no, but she just doesn't answer. I have plenty of other girls. I just don't understand why she's sending mixed signals. Any advice? Yeah, and I didn't understand this one fully until I was in this situation. And I think what happens is, and I'm just going to pull this number out of, out of the air, but let's say it's like on the attraction level scale, the girl has to be at like at level 20 for her to commit to going on a date with you. And it sounds like girls who do this, first off, they're in a bad mood, they're not getting attention elsewhere, so they know you're on the hook, they'll shoot you a text out of the blue, they'll start chit-chatting with you and they'll get some attention from you. So first off, they're using you, but second off, it sounds like they're like right around that 18, 19 level. And uh, maybe something happens and they, they cross it, but then all it takes is another guy or a night out with the girls and she'll drop back down and not want to go on a date with you. So if she's doing that, like I said, she's using you and she's not serious about going on a date because her attraction, her interest level isn't that high. So in my opinion, that's a cold lead. I, I get rid of cold leads. If you have enough hot leads coming in the door every day, you don't have to work on cold leads. But if you really, really want this one, um, what I recommend doing is just cutting communication with her, not responding to her, waiting a little bit, month, two months, something like that, shoot her a text, maybe message her on Facebook, and uh, invite her to something. Joke around with her once or twice and then invite her to something real low pressure and low key. But if she's doing this, it sounds like she's not getting attention elsewhere. She's coming to you for it. And to me, that's not cool, so I'd cut her out. Um, this one's from Slick Trick. Bravo, all the times you've spoken at Style Life chats and forums, I've never once seen you mention that you had a girlfriend. It seems that your relationships with girls are never traditional or monogamous. With all the girls you meet and go through, do you ever find one that you want to be in an exclusive relationship with? If not, how do you manage multiple sexual relations? That's a big question, so I'm just going to do the first part, which is I have been in relationships since I got into this stuff. I've been in the most amazing, awesome, loving relationships since I got into this stuff. So the reason you guys don't hear me usually talking about it is because I like to keep my current private life private. Once something's in the past and the relationship's over, then I'll use it for, for teaching Met, or teaching points and for experience and I'll talk about it. But as it's going on, I usually like to keep my stuff private. You also notice sometimes, well, you guys probably don't notice this, but a lot of times when I'm talking about things, if I talk to the girl that I'm with right now uh, and she gives me permission to talk about our personal life, when I'm giving advice, I'll say, oh, this is something that happened to me with one girl. But I always kind of throw the, I skew the timeline on it. So it could be something that happened to me yesterday, but I say, oh, this happened a while ago with a girl, blah, blah, blah. So that way I can kind of keep things private and that way guys aren't posting on my Facebook page about things that are going on right at this moment and then a girl that I'm with can read it and then get mad at me. So I, I like to keep a lot of my stuff private, but anything I think is pertinent to like coaching I'll bring out there. All right, this one's from Dan. I'm scared of going on dates with cute girls I know who like me because I don't know what to talk about. I feel like I have to keep the conversation going because else it'll just drop quiet and be awkward. Thanks in advance. All right, first off, to get good at dating, you got to date. And to get good at talking and communicating with cute girls on dates, you got to practice it. You got to be prepared that you're going to fall flat, that you're going to mess up, that you're going to crash and burn on some dates. That happens. It's not a big deal. If you're really stumped and you don't know what to talk about on a date, um, well, first off, you can learn canned routines like we all know, cue, personality test, all that stuff. Keep it in your back pocket for when you need it, pull it out and use it. Second thing is you can always ask questions. Everyone loves talking about themselves. But don't just ask about basic, boring interview questions like everyone else does. What do you do for work? Where are you from? Blah, blah, blah. 
Like, go deeper. Try to get, like, get to the emotions. Of, like, why do you work? Oh, you're a nurse. That's awesome. Why do you want to become a nurse? Like, what happened in your life? that made you decide that's what you want to do. And then she usually has a cool story about how she was sick or a family member was sick and blah, blah, blah. And they really start opening up. So that's the stuff I recommend. Another tip, which is the most important one in my book, don't go on really long dates, especially at the beginning, because you don't want to put yourself in those positions where things can get awkward and quiet. And the second part of that is go on dates that focus on other things and you sitting across from her at a table and, and just interviewing each other. Go on a date that's fun, do something cool, like if you go to a Korean barbecue place, you guys are cooking and, and uh, you have another activity to do. One of the places out here in LA, there's something called U-Wink where they have like little video games at the table, you can do that. Some of those actually have dating games on them too. So anything like that that you can do that takes the focus off of you and her and puts it on something else is always awesome in my book, especially at the beginning. All right, this one comes from King of Aces. Uh, what's the rule? When you go out with the wing on selecting a target, um, he then goes into how him and his wing went out, and they agreed on who the target was, and then his wing got blown out by his girl and then kind of switched. So first off, whoever opens the set owns the set. And a lot of times guys are like, oh, we're sitting at the bar, and these girls started talking to us. Well, who'd the girl start talking to first? If I'm sitting there with a, with a friend or a wingman, and a girl opens me, that's my set. And even if I go over my shoulder and ask for, like, the salt or whatever, and I'm the first one to initiate a conversation with them, my set. And if your wing isn't happy with that, that's motivation for him to go out and start opening more sets. So first off, whoever opens the set owns the set. Second, you have to make it clear to your, to your wingman how to, like, how to communicate to him that this is my girl, this is my target. So I ran into this at the beginning, and sometimes my wing and I, we would uh, we'd cross the line. Like, I would think he was going after one girl, he'd think he's going after another girl. So two things can really solve this. One, just just take control of the set. A lot of times I would say, if I'm talking to my girl and the, the obstacle is kind of getting in the way, and my wingman's kind of not sure what's going on, I would just take the lead and say, hey man, you got to tell her about that one thing that you were telling me about. Or you got to show her that trick you were showing me. Oh, you got to tell her about the, that cool astrology thing. Or you got to read her palm like I was talking about. Something. And I, I, I use a routine that he knows. So I'm not throwing him under the bus. Which you can do also later, which is really fun to do with your wings. We'd always mess with each other. And I'd go, oh, this is my buddy. He's like, the, he's like a classic, classically trained piano player or whatever. We make something up. We try to make it like as crazy as possible. And then as an improv exercise, we'd always have to like try to sell it to the girls, which was always fun. But that isn't this. So I always give them something that they know that they can use. So that way I'm not screwing them over, but I'm telling them, like, you need to talk to her. Like, do that with this girl. Leave us alone. The second thing is we even came up with like little jokes and uh, I guess nags where we're busting balls. Where if I'm talking to the girl, I go, oh, that's a really cool shirt. Where'd you get that? Oh, did you get it at Target? Or I thought I saw that shirt at Target. Something like that. Because that way anyone hears Target, they think the clothing store. But my wingman hears Target. I'm saying it to someone. He knows that that's her and she's off limits. Uh, if your wingman is continuously wrecking your sets or blowing you out or going after your girls and you've talked to them, or he's getting drunk and acting stupid, if he's doing any of this stuff, he's not a good wingman. He's not in this for the right reasons. He's just out trying to get girls on his own, trying to get laid. He doesn't care about improving and helping you out. And the reason I'm willing to do all the cheesy, dumb, dancing monkey shit that I did as a wingman is because I knew my wingman would do it back to me. So, all right, last one is this one is from Mr. Memphis. It says, what is the first piece of reading material you would tell an AFC to bury his nose into? First thing I always tell everyone to read is the game. Because it tells you about this stuff. It's not like a how-to book, but it tells you what's possible with this. It gives you some examples. It gives you some routines that you can go out and use. So I always recommend that. And when guys start asking me questions and they know what I do, oh, you're a dating coach. What should I do in this situation? I always tell them, read the game, then get back to me. Because if they aren't willing to do that, anything I say to them is going to go in one ear, out the other, and they're not going to take it to heart. So I always say read the game. So spend less Go out in the field more. I've heard lots of percentages out there thrown around how much reading material you should do and how much infield. I say it's like 90-10, like 10% reading, 90% in the field. Because my background, martial arts, firearms training, the only thing that helps me get better at shooting a gun on target is going to the range and shooting, not, not reading some gun magazines or watching some videos of someone else shooting a gun. So, All right, guys, hope you guys enjoyed this. I tried to rush it, and uh, you keep sending me questions. The more questions you send me, the more of these I'll do. And I love doing stuff like this, so I'm happy to help everyone out. BravoPUA.com, email me, BravoPUA at gmail.com. And the subject line, ask the alpha male. I'll get to as many of these as I can. Take care, guys.